This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman. We're broadcasting from Stockholm, Sweden. As we end today's show with a damning U.N. report that says 7 million children worldwide are deprived of their liberty, from children detained on the U.S.-Mexico border to the missing children of ISIS fighters. The Global Study on Children Deprived of Liberty reports that millions of children are living in various states of detention across the globe, from orphanages and foster homes to police custody and immigration detention. Among them, at least 410,000 are detained in jails and prisons, where violence is, quote, endemic. The study also found the number of children detained in the context of armed conflict dramatically has risen. The global study was published in November on the 30th anniversary of the Convention on the Rights of the Child, the landmark international treaty affirming the world's commitment to protecting children. It is the most ratified UN treaty in history. The United States is the only country that has not ratified the convention. We're joined now by the lead author of the UN report on children, Nan Fred Novak. He is an Austrian human rights lawyer, serves as the secretary general of the Global Campus of Human Rights based in Venice, Italy, and he's also the former UN special rapporteur on torture. We welcome you to Democracy Now. It's great to have you with us, Manfred. If you can summarize the results of this devastating report. Uh, uh, as you said already, it's more than 7 million children uh, that are deprived of liberty, most of them in all kinds of institutions, but also in the administration of justice, in migration detention. And every of this child is too much, because the Convention on the Rights of the Child is very clear. It says deprivation of liberty of children shall only be a allowed as a measure of last resort. So it means that we have to do much more. States primarily have to do much more in order to reduce those children by means of diversion, by uh, stopping immigration detention, because it is never a measure of last resort. It always violates the convention. But also to establish special children courts to apply diversion measures, because we need much more resources to support families foster families, but also child welfare systems. They should take with children, even if they are in conflict with the law. So you talked about detention and how that violates uh, the international treaties and the Convention on Child. The U.S., let's start there, yeah. is the only country in the world that has not ratified this convention. Yes. Explain the convention. Uh, the convention is now 30 years old. Uh, it uh, entails all kind of rights, uh, in particular also every decision that affects children should take into account the best interests of the child. Children should participate in every, de uh, uh, every decision that is directly affecting them. Uh, there should be no discrimination against children. There should not be violence, whether sexual violence, etc., but also, in principle, no deprivation of liberty. On the other hand, children should be supported uh, in the right to education, health care, etc. It's a very comprehensive treaty that uh, really takes into account the, the that most the US basic alone needs has, of children. Is not honoring. Yes. So you talked about detention on the border. The number of children that are detained, that are separated by their families in this country, and you talking about an international violation of law. Yes, of course, this was, uh, in my opinion, a decision that is inhuman treatment, both to the children and very small children that were separated from their families, but also to the families. And now sometimes the families have been deported back to Mexico or Central America, uh, and the children are still kept in, in the United States. The children don't know where their families are. The families are searching for the children. This is terrible if you imagine if you are a mother of a small child and you don't know where the child is. Hmm. Also, the children of ISIS fighters Explain where they're being imprisoned. We have about 29,000 of these children. Uh, partly they were recruited via the internet uh, by ISIS. Partly whole families went to the so-called caliphate. Um, and uh, it's small children, or they were even born there. And now they are detained either by the Kurdish authorities in the north of Syria or in Iraq under deplorable conditions. And uh, very often, European or other countries where they are coming from don't want to take them back. Uh, so what we are 
saying and recommending is that European and Central Asian and other states should take the responsibility for their own nationals to actually take them back and try to to re-socialize them, not to punish them. Children in armed conflict, child soldiers, should be seen primarily as victims, but not as perpetrators. Mm. Talk about Uyghur children. Talk about what's happening in China right now. I mean, what we know is that about one million human beings, Uyghurs, Muslims from Xinjiang in China, are currently detained in camps uh, for re-education purposes. Um, and of course, many of them are children, and also children have been separated from their parents. But uh, we don't have enough information to really say how many, but certainly those are thousands, many thousands of children that are suffering there. Mm. So what does it mean when a state doesn't participate in giving over information? Of course, we sent out a question to all member states of the United Nations. Uh, and we had a fairly good response. But of course, certain states, including China and the United States of America, did not reply to our questionnaire. So we had to uh, rely on other official data. And that's why also our estimates are very conservative. If I'm speaking about 410,000 children in jails and uh, prisons, it's a very conservative estimate. Uh, probably the real number is much higher. I wanted to ask you about a story that um, goes back in time, but actually is in the headlines right now. Uh, and it's about this latest news uh, that we had in our headlines um, about the International Criminal Court finding um, the U.S. Uh, looking into uh, crimes against humanity or war crimes. And, I mean, when you were the U.N. Rapporteur on torture, right. um, you called for an investigation into President Bush and Donald Rumsfeld for war crimes. This relates directly. Yes, uh, for war crimes and crimes against humanity, for me, for me, I was special rapporteur on torture, for torture that was practiced, uh, both in secret detention camps uh, the, in, in Guantanamo Bay, in, in Abu Ghraib, and in, in other facilities, in particular also in Afghanistan, uh, the, the prison of darkness, etc., which were terrible crimes that were committed there under the direct responsibility uh, of President Bush and, of course, uh, Secretary Rumsfeld as well. Mm -hmm. uh, so I am very happy, actually. It's a little bit late that the International Criminal Court only now is starting to investigate these crimes that happened in Afghanistan uh, many, many years ago. I was struck by how little attention this latest report that you've put out has gotten, when you're talking about 7 million children, and it could well be more children um, being detained, imprisoned, held in some way around the world. Um, uh, some of the media tried to discredit it, um, based on the news conference that you held, talking about a number you used. And I'm wondering if you could comment quickly yeah. on this, talking about the number of children in detention in the United States and immigration detention. Yes, um, it was uh, a number that dated back to 2015, still under the Obama administration. But it was the latest reliable number that we had on the total number per annum uh, that are detained in migration detention in the United States. Uh, currently, the latest figures that we have are 76,000 uh, in 2019. So it's not that much a difference. And, and, the, and, the, and the U.S. is still the country with the highest number of children held the migration detention worldwide. Mm. And so what you're saying is there's been a continuum from the Obama to the Trump administration. Of course, yes. Um, fi finally, the legacy of the torture program of the United States, you having served for years as the U.N. Rapporteur on Torture. <sighs> Of course, it was a, a very bad precedent. And uh, in many other countries, who said the United States is the country uh, that founded democracy and human rights more than 200 years ago. They are now officially applying torture. So why shouldn't we do the same? Because we are also dealing with terrorists. Uh, and uh, so that is really undermining the absolute prohibition of torture. Uh, and that's a very, very negative long-term effect of the Bush administration. Well, we will certainly 
link to your report um, on the imprisonment of children worldwide. Your figures, oh, the new global study on children um, uh, detained, uh, deprived of liberty. Um, uh, your number, at least 7 million. Manfred Novak, Austrian human rights lawyer, former U.N. rapporteur on torture from 2004 to 2010. When we, um, we will be live streaming today's impeachment hearing at democracynow.org starting at 10 Eastern Standard Time. That does it for our show. Special thanks to Stockholm's Open Channel, Stockholm's only independent grassroots non-commercial TV station committed to free speech. I'm Amy Goodman. Thanks so much for joining us.